How's it going, guys? It is 3.36 a.m., May 1st here in Japan. I just recorded this clip. It was very solid, and something happened with my mic. Happens maybe one out of 100 clips or so. Doesn't really matter. Point is, the clip got fucked up, and I got to restart it. So rather than prefacing longer than I already have, I'll just hop into the clip here. Tell you to subscribe to my channel, be a quick asshole. And so we've got a 55 year old woman. She has a six month history of progressive weakness in both her legs. She's had trouble arising from a chair, finds it easier after rocking back and forth first. She has had a 20 pound weight loss during this time. Smoked one pack of cigarettes daily for 30 years. Examination shows weakness of hip flexion. Sensory examination shows no abnormalities. X-ray of the chest shows a nodular density. Question wants to know, What's the most likely location of the abnormality? Let's just hop to the answer choices. Choice A, anterior horns, wrong fucking answer. This will be the answer in US for both polio, poliomyelitis, as well as Wernick Hoffman syndrome, which is spinal muscular atrophy. So polio is going to be an RNA virus. It's one of the enteroviruses, it affects the anterior horns, and you're going to get an ipsilateral shrunken leg. That's literally how it presents, okay? And of course, we vaccinated against it at two, four, six months. And then We've got spinal muscular atrophy, which is going to present in a neonate floppy baby syndrome with tongue fasciculations. It's a weird finding, but shows up in one of the neuroforms for TCK you have to be aware of. So anterior horns is the start of the lower motor neuron of the corticospinal tract. So you've got the upper motor neuron that goes from the primary motor cortex down to the anterior horn. If you have a finding, a lesion of the UMN, then you're going to have up findings. So hyperreflexia, hypertonia, Babinski sign, clonus. If you have a lesion from the anterior horn or lower down to the muscle itself, LMN findings, so hyporeflexia, hypotonia with atrophy, fasciculations, pointus, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, muscle, wrong fucking answer. Could refer to 4,000 things. Duchenne, Becker, those are high yield findings for you, assimile. Okay, so X linked recessive DMD gene, dystrophin gene. So you need to know dystrophin. Uh, codes for alpha beta dystrophy glycan, which connects the cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton will often be the answer on USMLA. So it connects the cytoskeleton of the muscle cell to the extracellular matrix, stabilizes the cell. A lot we can talk about. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, myoneural junction, correct answer. This answer is very buzzy. They can write myoneural junction. They can write neuromuscular junction refers to either Lambert-Eaton syndrome or myasthenia gravis on USMLE. In this case, we have Lambert-Eaton syndrome, secondary to small cell bronchogenic carcinoma. We have some sort of neuromuscular issue here. You say, not really sure what's going on, but oh, there's a lung cancer. So you say, well, what could that be? What are the perineal plastics? So you start considering them. You say, okay, well, that's just Lambert-Eaton syndrome. They throw in this descriptor that she's had trouble arising from a chair, but if she tries a few times, if she rocks back and forth a few times, she can now get up easier. They like that on US Similia because Lambert Eaton gets better with activity. Myasthenia gravis gets worse, right? So Lambert Eaton syndrome, you're going to have the production of autoantibodies against presynaptic voltage gated calcium channels. And myasthenia gravis can be a perineoplastic, not of small cell, but of thymoma, where you get antibodies against postsynaptic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So this is how Lambert Eaton presents. It's just neuromuscular findings. They get better with activity. Myasthenia gravis, not only does it get worse, but you tend to get a triad of diplopia, dysphagia, ptosis in an office worker in her 40s. So real quick, spinal cord, wrong fucking answer. Could refer to a myriad of things. We could mention brown saquard syndrome. Okay, that's when you have a hemi section of the spinal cord. It will not be someone who is stabbed hyper perfectly half through the spinal cord. It doesn't work like that. Okay, so Brown Saquard syndrome, as per my observation on 2CK neuroforms, it's going to show up as viral infection causing transverse myelitis, or it can be lupus causing transverse myelitis, where as I just fucking said, half the spinal cord dysfunctional. So you're going to have ipsilateral corticospinal tract findings, ipsilateral dorsal column findings, contralateral spinal thalamic tract findings. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, superior cervical ganglion, wrong fucking answer. First to corner syndrome. So you could have a pancos tumor, such as an adenocarcinoma in the lung. You say, OMG, we've got a lung cancer. Sure, but we don't have Horner syndrome. So Horner syndrome will be an ipsilateral uh, partial ptosis, anhydrosis, meiosis, which is pupillary constriction. Wrong fucking answer. 
you know the deal to make more content i feel like my stuff subscribe my channel i appreciate your time that's it